God, and let them use you. Sister Adam, let me get one of them things, the white. Hallelujah. Preach, preacher. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, put a praise in the atmosphere. Hallelujah. Come on, just lift up Jesus. We lift your name, God. Hallelujah. Come on, clap, clap, clap your hands for the Lord this morning. Glory, glory, glory. When the praises go up, the blessings come down. And we give your name praise and glory, honor, majesty, and might, dominion, and power. It all belongs to the Lord. Look at your neighbor and say, it belongs to God. Your praise belongs to God. Your hallelujah belongs to God. Your thank you, Jesus, belongs to God. When I think about the goodness of Jesus and all he's done for me, my soul cries hallelujah. Glory, glory. Glory to God. Giving honor to our pastor. Amen. I thank God for just standing in front of you all. Such a great of a church. Amen. Thank God for this opportunity to break the bread with you all. I don't take it for granted. Don't take it lightly. We're going to the book of Numbers, chapter 23 this morning. Numbers chapter 23, 19. Are you there? Can you stand in honor of the word with me this morning? Numbers 23 and 19. God is not a man that he should lie, neither the son of man that he should repent. Had he said it, oh, y'all got it already. Shall he not do it? Or had he spoken it, shall he not make it good? God ain't playing about blessing you. Look at somebody and tell them God ain't playing about blessing you. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Father, we thank you now, God, for what our eyes have laid on in your word this morning. We thank you for ministering your word to these, your saints, God. And we're asking you to let this vessel that is standing, God, before these, your people, God, speak the oracles of the Lord our God today. And we honor you and we praise you as the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. You are my strength and my redeemer. Amen. Amen. So you can tell when God ain't playing about blessing you because there is a way that God shows up sometimes. And you know this thing has only come from the Lord. God will work some stuff so good. You'll be like, now, Nikki, I know didn't nobody do this thing but God. I know didn't nobody wake me up but God. I know didn't nobody clothe me in my right mind but God. Didn't nobody spew out this blessing but the Lord. These are the types of blessings that show up and you know can't nobody do it but the Lord. Like mysterious checks Minister Jennings in the mail evangelist was just testifying about. Like when the doctor see one thing and then he turns around and say, I, I didn't see see that. Uh, see, a blessing is a benefit from the Lord. It is a gift that is bestowed upon you by God. Certain gifts have a stamp of God's fingerprint uh, that man can't take a grab of or can't take uh, credit for. God can make some stuff happen uh, that it would look like he cracked the sky and he came and personally delivered your blessing. I'm talking about the blessings uh, that confound uh, the wisdom of man. One, when the imprint of my son's back was in the front windshield of his car through an accident, uh, God saved him in the middle of the crash. That was a blessing of protection uh, because God ain't playing about you. Uh, when God didn't allow the fire from heated moments of your life to burn you out of your faith, uh, you know that he ain't playing about you. Uh, when God gave you the mind to crack the code, uh, to open up the portal for his treasures uh, to come down directly to you. You know God ain't playing about you. Uh, when the roles of the text in the Bible reverse Psalms 121 and 126 and 1 says when the Lord turned the captivity of Zion, we were like them that dream. Yet and still I read a little further and in Job 42 and 10 he says and the Lord turned the captivity of giant Job when he prayed for his friends. Also the Lord gave Job double twice as much as he had. You know God ain't playing about you. One minute you can be in the Lord and I'm waiting on the Lord to bless me and the next time you turn you will be testifying and the Lord has blessed me. This is when you know God ain't playing about you because God is 
able to bring you down to up. He is able to turn you all around. Tell somebody, my testimony is getting ready to be, and the Lord has blessed me. He turned the captivity. God is serious. He ain't playing about blessing you. This is good news for somebody that's standing in the need of a move from God. For somebody that's sitting by the pool of Bethesda waiting on God to respond, asking God, God, are you thinking about me? I came to deliver a message. Yes, he is. Just because you have yet to see God respond out loud don't mean he has not observed you quietly. God is serious about blessing you. Numbers chapter 23, church. It's interesting because as we know, the Bible talks about many of the prophets of the Lord. There were the prophets of Baal, we know as false prophets. Then there were those prophets that were of the Lord's generation. They were righteous that were on the Lord's side, like Isaiah, Jeremiah, Elijah, and the many others. But here it is, we find in the 23rd chapter of Numbers, the contrast of the prophets of the Lord that were of the Lord versus those that were not. This was a very complex situation with this prophet named Balaam. Because Balaam was a prophet, he, amen, didn't really have the uh he was a prophet of the lord but he was not of the lord and the bible says though he was not of the lord he was not a righteous prophet but yet he has some type of respect for the lord because in the book of numbers there is this king named balak who sends for balak and balak wanted the prophet balaam to curse the children of israel balaam said when to balak he cannot curse israel even though he was not for Israel, he still says, I can't, I can't curse him, Balak. I cannot curse what God didn't curse. I can only speak what God will have me to speak. In Numbers 23 and 5, the Lord put a word in Balaam's mouth. And he said, return unto Balak, and thus shall thou speak. The king of Moab wanted him to curse the children of Israel. Come on, somebody. You know God won't allow the enemy to curse what he has chosen. So Balaam understood, I cannot curse what God has chosen. And in the Bible, he's going back and forth with Balaam, having a conversation in, book, in Numbers 23 and 19 through 20. says, Behold, I have received commandment to bless and has blessed, and I cannot reverse it. And this is good news to you to reaffirm that God will make the complexities in your life obey his word. Even though it's at odds, even though it don't look right, even though it don't look good, I'm telling you, God got a word for you this morning that he is getting ready to bless some complexities in your life. He's getting ready to release some blessings in your life. He's getting ready to do what eyes haven't seen and ears haven't heard. What I'm trying to say is it does not matter the odds or the opposition against you. It does not stand against the word that God has spoken concerning you. Tell somebody God ain't playing about blessing me. When he said that I will make you the head and not the tail, above only and not beneath, the lender and not the borrower, I will bless you in the city. I will bless you in the field. I will bless you when you come, and I will bless you when you go. God will command a blessing on you. You know he ain't playing when every time you turn around, you can see the goodness of the Lord all in the land of your life. When you can see him rebuking the devourer for your sake. When you can see him meeting needs and exceeding your expectation. I'm talking to a church that I know God got a blessing for. God will command a blessing upon you. But we got to have the belief system and the faith to come into agreement with what God has already spoken. Tell somebody, you got to believe him for the blessing to make the process of being blessed flow a little better. It takes away the frustration from the wait. It ministers to your mood while you wait. It fights off the weariness while you wait. When you say, I know without a shadow of a doubt that I don't care how I feel right now. I don't care what I'm going through right now I know that God ain't playing about blessing me I can't see it right now but I know it's on the way I can't feel it right now but I know it's on the way so God says come on get my church to believe me right because when your belief system matches what God said the Lord God says I'm gonna open up the portal of heaven and I'm gonna pour you out a blessing that you won't have room enough 
to receive. It behooves us to believe God when he speaks because it'll take away some headaches. It'll take away some anxiety. It'll take away some depression. The Bible says that those that wait on the Lord and be of good courage and strengthen your heart, wait I say on the Lord. God ain't playing about blessing you. He'll show up in 24 hours. He may show up when the sun go down. He may show up 12 years like he did for the woman with the issue of blood, but he's still going to come and see about his word because God has to bless you. You have to apply faith and employ the work to see the manifestation of the results. James 2 and 20 says, faith without works is dead alone. This is one way to know and see, and see your blessing because God ain't playing about blessing you. He will make complex situations hearken to the word of his command. Some stuff may be out of your control and out of your reach and may be in your odds or in opposition. The environment you came from was not conducive for you to elevate or a lack of knowledge or the influence of power over you have got you caught on a thicket uh, like Israel was. Uh, they were chosen, but they were stuck. Uh, tell somebody I'm chosen, but I've been stuck. Uh, and God didn't stop blessing me. You chosen, uh, but you got a word from the Lord over your life. Uh, you are the head and not the tail. You are above only and not beneath. You are who God says you are. They would have been at the mercy of an evil king that didn't want to see them blessed. But I'm just trying to deliver this message from God to you. I don't care what boast you under, what situation you are under that don't want to see you blessed. When God has declared you blessed, that's the word of the Lord over your life that you are blessed. Tell somebody I'm blessed of the Lord. I'm blessed of the Lord. Say it one time for the Father. Say it a second time for the Son. Say it a third time in the Holy Ghost. Somebody need to get that on your tongue. You need to get it in your spirit because the devil been trying to mislead you. The devil been trying to talk down to you and the devil been trying to dismay you. But I serve the devil. Notice I counsel every assignment of the enemy. You are blessed. God, hallelujah, has told me to tell you that I've chosen to bless you. I've chosen to bring you out. I've chosen to call you out. Unfortunately, some of us have been around some people that really don't want to see you blessed. But tell the person next to you, I'm sorry you feel that way because God still calls me blessed. The default setting is you've been chosen to be blessed. Tell somebody you've been chosen to be blessed. I don't care what want to curse you. When God wants you blessed, he will make even the Balaams that are around you that are not fond of your blessing. Hallelujah. Release a word to bless you. Has anybody been in a company of people? Hallelujah. You know they don't like you. But God will tell them to pray for you anyway because God has decreed you to be blessed. Numbers 24 and 10, the Bible says Balaam's anger was kindled against Balaam. And he swore his hands together. And Balak said unto Balaam, I call thee to curse mine enemies. And behold, thou hast altogether blessed them these three times. Come on, Balaam, not just one time, not just two times, but three times you done blessed the folk. Hallelujah. God will form the mouth of a babe. He will form the mouth of your situation. He will form the mouth of anything that he desires to use to the strangers on the street. This is why the Bible says to be... Don't in, be not weary, hallelujah, and to entertain strangers unaware because you don't know who's carrying your blessing. We focus on life, lifing, but I'm trying to tell you that God is still guiding, He's still good, He's faithful to all generations. He's guiding, He's doing the God thing. That's what guiding means. He's doing the God thing, means that His word goes forth and does not return unto Him void. God ain't. God ain't playing about blessing you. Complexity around you and things don't make God change his commitment to bless you. It may not be a simple fix to you, but tell somebody God has charge. Jeremiah 32 and 27. He says, behold, I am the Lord, the God of all flesh. Is there anything too hard? For me, ask somebody, is there anything too hard for God? 
We've been trying to fix it. You tried to make it. You tried to put it together. God says, I'm in charge of this blessing. This is why it's too hard to be fixed because God says, I'm over all flesh. I can do what humans can't do. I can bless you when man can't bless you. I can cause, hallelujah, the blessing to come from the north, the south, the east, and the west. How many know that he can reach way down and pull out a blessing? He can create a miracle out of a messed up situation because God is not a man that he should lie. Neither the son of man that it shall repent. Had he said it, shall it not make it good? Tell somebody, he ain't man. This text reveals the immutability of God. That God does not change in any way. He is not subject to change his nature, his character, makes him true to himself because he is the God of all truth. Hebrews 13 and 8 says, Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, and forever. Whenever you want consistency, don't look to man, you don't look to woman, look unto the hills from whence cometh your help. You can always find consistency in the Lord. I change, we change, our minds change, our moods change. But there is something about the faithfulness of God, the loyalty of God. He does not change. Come wind, weather, warm, hot, sun, or cold. The seasons may change. But tell somebody, my God is not going to change. He is not a man. Man, as we learn from our pastor in Hebrew, means a dumb, both male and female. We are fickle, and the frailty of our flesh makes us irresistible to not do some stuff different at some time. This is why one day we up and the next day we down. Because of our fickleness and the frailty of our flesh is moved by our emotions. The Bible says though, Psalms 103 and 14, for he knoweth our frame. He remembereth that we are dust. So he separates himself from the art of man because he knows he cannot allow his word to return unto him void. I know we mess up. I know I've messed up. I know everybody mess up. But tell somebody, God God's correctness uh, would not allow him to mess up. Uh, he said in Jeremiah 1 and 5, uh, Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. Behold, I was shaping in iniquity, uh, and in sin did my mother conceive me. But he says I sent my son with my spirit to incorporate a plan of redemption uh, because God ain't playing uh, about blessing you. Uh, so he sent his son in the earth uh, to take upon himself our iniquities uh, so that we wouldn't allow the sins of our flesh uh, to mess up the blessing that he has already ready to prepare for you. Tell somebody you blessed on today. God is so true to his word. He won't even let us mess up our own blessings because he spoke the blessing over us. Isaiah 14 and 27. For the Lord of hosts had proposed who shall disannul it? And his hand is stretched out. And who shall turn it back? We could have messed it up generations ago. And we did mess it up. But the truthfulness of God to himself says, I'm not going to take my word back. I'm not going to take my blessings back. I'm not going to take my promises back. If I said it, shall I not make it good? Romans 3 and 3 says, For what if some did not believe? Shall their unbelief make the faith of God without effect? You ought to shout right there. Just because people don't believe God for you, don't believe God with you, don't mean that they're believe that God won't still bless you. I'm so glad to know that my blessing is not contingent upon my sister, my brother, my aunt, or my child it's touching and agreeing with me. God says, I'm going to do it. If they don't believe, I'm going to make a way. If they don't believe, I'm going to bring you out. If they don't believe, God is so committed. God is so intentional about blessing you that he strategized grace to help get us to the blessing. Because remember, he can't lie. So he created this as a way to keep his word to bless us. Because if it was for us, our sin could have took the blessing. But for his grace, somebody said for his grace. You see, grace gives us what we don't deserve. Mercy keeps us from getting what we don't deserve. Because God ain't playing about blessing you. He said, let me give them some grace so that I can get them to this blessing. Let me give them some mercy so I can get them to this thing. So that I can get them to 
this blessing. God is not a man that he shall lie, neither the son of man that he shall repent. Because God never makes a mistake. Because he is true, which means he's also correctness. So he never has to change because he is always exact. Tell somebody he's always exact. A In his A's in the Bible, he's exact. In his D's, he's exact. We have to repent because we can be incorrect and seldomly get some stuff right. Which is the main, the, another reason why we should praise him harder because he blesses us in spite of us. Because he blesses you in spite of us. Because he keeps on making a way. He keeps on delivering. He keeps on turning it around. He keeps on bringing your doubts up. He keeps on turning the devil upside down. Because he's so true. And the amazing thing about God is even in our and my imperfections, he does not change his mind about you. Come on, give the Lord a victory hand clap of praise. Just thank him for not changing his mind. Just thank him for not changing his mind. I'm not done yet. This is impeccable grace. When God gives us what we don't deserve. So not only does the scripture say, neither is he the son of man that he should repent. But had he said it, shall he not do it? We're talking about his truth. And we have the cliche, we say that because he's true, or we say in cliche, cliche that word is born. Before the merchant traders in the 1500s, the late 1500s, adapted this statement that word is born, was already on record for God being word and born. He was already bearing witness to, I'm true to my word. God don't speak and don't act on what he spoke. He makes sure that every word that proceeds out of his mouth does not return to him void. Isaiah 55 and 11 says, So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth and shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing whereto I send it. God sent his word out on you. He's going to make it prosper for you. You know God is serious when he speaks on a thing. When he puts his word on a thing. When he says I'm going to do it. God don't let his word return unto him void because he can't lie. God ain't playing about blessing you. He shows you the way to be blessed. This is how we know that he ain't playing because he took his time pastor to show us in the word how to obtain the blessings of the Lord. The Bible says in Deuteronomy 28 and 2, uh, all these blessings shall come on thee and overtake thee. Uh, if thou shalt hearken unto the voice uh, of the Lord thy God. Uh, what did his word already tell you? Hallelujah. What did he say? If you will believe, uh, hallelujah, I can do all things through Christ uh, that strengthened me. He will show you uh, the way to be blessed. Uh, that means because he spoke it up, uh, when you pick it up in this Bible, all you got to do is read what thus saith the Lord. He's showing us the path, the, the pathway to be blessed. Not only has he showed you the way to be blessed, but God will send his help to bless you. He ain't playing about blessing you. He will send his help. If God got to raise up a donkey, he's going to bless you. The Bible says in Psalms 91 and 11, for he should give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. Tell somebody, God is getting ready to send you some help. I know you don't know how it's going to come. I know you don't know how he's going to make it happen. But I'm telling you, there is an angel, hallelujah, with your name on it, with your situation on it, that God has already put a word in the angel's mouth to say, go help my mother. Go help my daughter. Go help Israel. Go help Jesus, people, church. Uh, this is, oh God, I feel the power of the Holy Ghost. Uh, tell somebody, he's getting ready to send you some help. Uh, he's going to make sure that the blessing come to pass. He's so serious about blessing you. Not only will he show you the way to be blessed, not only will he send you his help, but he will show up himself to bless you. God, he will show up himself. John 11, 11 says, these things said he, after that, he said unto them, our friend Lazarus, Mary and Martha, was troubled at the death of their brother Lazarus. But because God had a relationship with Lazarus, even though it looked like it was too late 
for him to answer the prayers of his sisters. But the Bible says that Jesus made a personal visit to the grave where Lazarus was. Jesus is getting ready to make a visitation uh, to somebody that's been calling uh, on the name of the Lord. And it's been looking dead. It's been looking drowned. It's been looking like it's over. It's been looking like God ain't in it. But I'm telling you right now that in the middle of your dead situation, uh, in the middle of your dry bones, uh, in the middle of you laying in the grave, uh, God is getting ready to come back and make a personal visitation to you and say, girl, I need you to get up out of this grave. Girl, I need you to come forth out of this grave. Come on, Jesus, people. Tell somebody you getting ready to get up because God has charged a blessing to come your way. He will show up himself to bless you. He can't depend on the hands of man sometimes. So he says, I'm coming. I'm coming. I'm coming to bless you. Some points to ponder. My time. God can't lie. When you participate in the word, a praise report is reward. God can't let you go without because the Bible calls the saints the sheep of his pasture. He made a promise to Abraham that I will bless thee and thy seed. You know God ain't playing when the first thing that he does is speak over your life, is speak to your storm, is speak to your situation. The Bible says that after he speaks in, in, the, in Genesis, he says, let there be the next thing there it was. I'm going to close right here and you give God some praise. God has already said, let there be. I'm telling you, there it is. Your blessing is on the way. Your miracle is on the way. Your money is on the way. Your healing is on the way. Your deliverance is on the way. Your breakthrough is on the way. Your answer is on the way. He said, let it be. There it was. Tell somebody, turn around and see the goodness of the Lord. It's going to rest in the land of the living. Because he has already spoken. His word has gone forth and it will not tell somebody it will not, it shall not, it cannot return unto him for it's already gone out. Tell somebody it's already gone out. It can't come back empty. You can't come back to your house empty. You can't come back to your situation empty. Because Jesus came down. But he said, I'm not staying there, but I'm going to get up with the blessing of the church in my hand. Come on, give the Lord a victory hand clap of praise.